Hi, I'm Maddie. And I'm Sam. Thank you, as always, for your questions. We really love reading them. We do. And first up this week is a great one from 126 Rinner, who asks, what would happen if there were no more sharks in the ocean? And that's a great question, but it's actually a very scary one because it's not that far from reality. So sharks are known as notorious man killers, but for every human fatality, we kill 10 million sharks. It's nuts. It's nuts. And that translates to about 100 million sharks a year. Mm. And that's particularly bad because actually sharks are much more long-lived than you might think. And they've got very long pregnancies. They don't mature till later on in life. Mm. And they only have a few pups when they do give birth. Yeah, and because of that, it just it takes a really long time to replace those losses. So although sharks have been on this planet for over 400 million years, mm. your question could be answered within your lifetime. But we'll try and answer it now. <laughs> so sharks are apex predators, they're top of the food chain and nothing really eats big sharks apart from perhaps bigger sharks, Yeah. And once or twice maybe killer whales, but basically they're the kings of the ocean. Yeah, and if you take out the king, then the underlings rise up, <laughs> which is beginning to sound like Game of Thrones, <laughs> but yeah, so if you take out the king, then all of the animals that they would usually keep check on will multiply and start to just wreak havoc on you know, quite a complex food chain. Sharks usually take out cow-nosed rays, and these rays would usually eat mussels and shellfish. But when you take out the sharks, it means the rays have multiplied. So where they were usually found in their hundreds, they can now be found in their millions, which means they are just taking out the shellfish, just like a plague of locusts. Shellfish are actually really useful creatures. They're filter feeders, so they make the ocean much cleaner, yeah. much healthier, much clearer all of which impacts the local environment as well. And they've been finding something similar in Australia, where large sharks are being taken out of a coral reef ecosystem by fairly eco-friendly methods. These large sharks would usually eat the snapper, but without those, the snappers are eating algae-eating fish. And without those, the algae can just multiply and take over. But this algae then competes with the coral. And when the coral doesn't have room to grow, it really diminishes the recovery of bleached reefs. <sighs> <laughs> All of which means if we do lose sharks on a big epic scale, which we are, mm. then it will mean a domino effect of extinctions further down the food chain. Yeah. Pretty sobering stuff, but on a slightly lighter note, Ashley Hunter has asked us, do flies sleep? And that's a really good question, Ashley, because sleep is something we still don't know very much about. No, but we do know a lot about flies. Despite the annoying buzzing when you're trying to drift off, it does seem like flies have a pretty similar daily cycle to us. Okay. They're kind of more active during the day and more restful at night. Mm -hmm. But without sort of tiny little eyelids coming over and tiny little fly snores, <laughs> it's quite hard to tell if they're actually asleep but they do share the same sleeping characteristics as us vertebrates so they just have long periods where they're just not moving and they also have an increased arousal threshold meaning that it's harder to arouse them when they've been sleeping. There have been a lot of really great experiments on flies. One looked at trying to chop out its body clock so they didn't have a particular time of day to fall asleep. How do you chop the body clock out of a fly? <laughs> I don't know, but they ended up just sleeping in little chunks throughout the day. Another one looked at sleep deprivation, and sure enough, the longer you keep a fly awake, the longer and deeper it will need to sleep afterwards to catch up, and that's just known as sleep rebound. And there was even one that had a spooky parallel to humans, where younger flies need to sleep slightly longer, older flies slightly less, and they even get influenced by hypnotics and stimulants the same way we do. So coffee and alcohol, for example. Coffee waking up, alcohol making you sleepy. Wow! So, if flies sleep the same way we do, next time you see a fly having a little nap, you go and harass it, see how it likes it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we just condone animal violence? No, not really. It's Love it. Fly. It's a fly. I mean, what? <laughs> We've really loved getting your questions here at Earth on Pug, so do keep them coming in. Yeah, make sure you subscribe, share this with your friends, and we will see you soon. Bye! It's been said that some sharks can use over 30,000 teeth in a lifetime. New teeth are continually grown. They line up in rows and move forward as if they're on a conveyor belt, replacing those that are lost as they tear into prey. Why would you want to catch a white shark? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> um, really, we thought that having a white shark 
on display would be a, a really huge way um, to talk to people about the plight of sharks in the wild. And so it's a great ambassador species. We could tell them about what's going on with sharks in general because of finning and that we're really exploiting shark stocks much faster than they can replace themselves.